This is the best strategy by far that you could possibly use to get a perfect score on the hole punching section of the DAT and the same exact strategy that I used. Let's dive into it. Okay, so for this hole punching strategy, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is understand what you're provided with. And what I mean by that is you're gonna be provided with this type of graph on your whiteboard on the actual day of the DAT. This is exactly what your whiteboard is gonna look like. It's gonna have these lines. And what you wanna do first is you essentially wanna copy these four by four squares. And what I mean by that is we'll go ahead and make four by four squares on this piece of paper. So we'll draw one line horizontally like that. We'll get four more. We'll go horizontally and then we'll draw, draw our vertical lines so that we have our four by four boxes. Okay, and this is a really important note. You want to do this during your survey of natural sciences. The reason why I say that is because after your survey of natural sciences section, you're gonna then go into a break and then you're gonna go into your PAT section. But you don't wanna waste your time during the PAT section making these boxes on your whiteboard. So draw them before. The other dilemma is it's against the rules of Prometric and taking the DAT to draw anything or write notes on your whiteboard on this graph paper during breaks. So once you're done with the survey of natural sciences section, you've answered all the questions, you've reviewed everything, what I recommend doing is before clicking next to go onto the break, just wipe off your whiteboard or ask for a new whiteboard and then make these boxes there, then click next and go on to the next section so that your box is already made for the PAT section of the exam. So once we have our hole punching boxes made, now we'll go into the actual solving problems and talking through the strategy. So this strategy is called the axis of symmetry strategy. And the reason why it's called that is because an axis of symmetry is just a line that divides a shape or an object into two equal halves. So what we essentially wanna be doing is thinking about these diagrams as and folds just as splitting things in half. So what I mean by that is there's always gonna be an axis of symmetry and we always start with the very last fold where the hole punch is. So what we see is that there's a hole punch there and we're essentially gonna mimic that punch in our graph. So we're gonna say, okay, well, there's a punch there. And then what we see is that this was folded over itself like that, right? That's what this is telling us. So the axis of symmetry is like this. So we'll put an axis of symmetry there. And then we know anything that was here must be symmetrical, like this half is symmetrical with this, which means there should just be an X down there. And then with this step, we see that there's an axis of symmetry here. So the axis of symmetry is there. And then everything here, is symmetrical over the fold, which means there'll be an X here, right? Because it's going like that. And there's gonna be an X here as we flip everything over this new axis of symmetry. So then that's gonna go ahead and give us answer choice D. This is a really simple one. So let's go into another practice bomb and let's go into some more complicated ones so you can see exactly how this plays out. So here's number two. So like I said, we're always gonna start at our very last image, our punch, and we're gonna go ahead and put that punch into our graph. And then we see that there's an axis of symmetry right here, and this denotes that the fold happened there. So we're just gonna do one fold up to get to this next image, which means the axis of symmetry is here. And when we fold that up, there's gonna be an X there. Now we see from here to here, it was the axis of symmetry is right here. This is folded up. So there's another axis of symmetry there, which gives us a copy there. And then we see the next axis of symmetry for our first fold is like this. So we'll put that in. And then that means everything just gets flipped over from here onto the other side across this axis of symmetry so we have three X's there. And that gives us answer choice B. Let's go into a harder one. 
But before we dive into that question, I wanted to let you know of a huge opportunity to download a lot more tips, tricks, and study hacks that you can use to study more effectively, more efficiently, and improve your DAT score for absolutely free. I put all my tips and tricks into a free guide that you can download at predenting dot com forward slash DAT guide and I made it having been in your shoes before and knowing how stressful this exam can be and having been something that I wish I had when I was in your shoes. You can download it for free predenting dot com forward slash DAT guide and let's get back into it. Going into another practice problem we'll start at our very last image where we have the hole punches and we'll go ahead and add those in. And then we see that the axis of symmetry is essentially this. And so everything here is going to flip up there. So we'll go ahead and put that punch. And then we see the next axis of, of symmetry is essentially folding over here. So everything gets that's here just gets flipped over. And that gives us answer choice D. We can then move on to another question. So here, we'll start this image, which means we put a hole punch there. The axis of symmetry is right here, which means we get an X there. And then we have another axis of symmetry over here, right? But we this is designating a fold which means we just took this and put it right there. So we're gonna have an axis symmetry right here and everything in this column gets translated up here. And we have one more axis of symmetry going right across there to flip everything into this row. And that gives us answer choice E. So we'll go into one last practice question and we'll do the exact same thing and show you another problem. So here that's going to designate with a punch right there. And then we see the axis of symmetry is essentially this. So then everything here essentially going to translate. So there we go. Then we see that there's another axis of symmetry here. So everything that's here is going to translate down, which gives us an X there. And then we have an axis of symmetry going like this. This is going to be symmetrical with that. So then we see that we have an X there, an X here, and an X there. And that gives us answer choice B. So this is the best strategy when it comes to hole punching and the way you're going to want to approach this section. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe for more helpful pre-down videos, and make sure to watch this next video on how to ace the cube counting section of the PAT.